We're now going to have a look at how to add the doors in, in Archicad. The door tool that we're going to be using in version 21, the simplest door is called door 21 under the hinge doors. And when I set this up, I'll normally use this at a 900 opening width and a 2100 opening height. Now that's not the leaf size, that's the total frame size. And so when we're going to insert that, because like I've said before, we insert it into an existing wall or into a modelled wall. We don't cut a hole in the wall. So wherever possible, try to keep a wall consistent, running through the entire space where you can. Don't segment the wall. We can either import that or place that based on a centre point or either side point. Now, I tend to not worry about getting it right the first time. So if I wanted to, I could use a side point and then try to go, okay, yeah, that's where I want it to be. But I find it doesn't really work very well, and I spend more time trying to set it up than actually getting it right anyway. So what I tend to do is probably use the, the middle point, just place it roughly, just guess, in other words, and then go in and get it exactly correct. So generally, I'll set this up so it's 50 mil off a wall. So in this case, I'll move it 31 millimeters. And if I was designing the house that was a new house, then I'd probably make sure that it was 50 off either wall or, or something like that. In this instance, it's not. This is an existing house, so I'm not overly concerned with how it's representing. As long as it's representing roughly right, that's fine for me. Once I've placed one, I could go back to the wall tool again, or I can press Alt or Option to pick up the setting of the wall, sorry, the door in this case, and then I can repeat the process. I can't drag a copy, just a thought, I can't drag a copy of a wall to a different wall, sorry, a, a door from one wall to another wall. I need to place it again. The only time I can drag a copy is if I'm dragging it within the same wall. And rather than uh, having to use the number, this time I could just line it up with the other reference down here. Now in some cases, we don't want to have a door, we just want to have an opening. In order to create that opening, we could, like before, press control. When I hold control, hover over, that's going to turn my cursor into scissors, so I could click and that would cut a hole in the wall. But the problem with that is that hole will go the whole way up. It won't stop at a standard door height. So that's not really helpful necessarily for what we're trying to create. What we might want to do instead is go into our door tool and choose an empty door. So I'm going to choose this empty door here and then just choose the rectangular door opening. Again, we see it's got the same numbers. I can change these settings if I want to. But again, in terms of just doing a very simple conceptual sketch, I want to keep it quite fast. Now again, I can place this in here. I could leave it at a 900 opening. Or if I know that I actually want it to be the full width of this area, I can stretch it like that as well. Let's continue this. I'm just going to place these fast, not worry about doing it too precisely, and then I can come back and edit them later if I want to as well. Now, not all doors are going to be the same size. So as you, as you see, I'm placing these. You'll, you'll see that some of them need to be resized and made a little bit smaller. But generally speaking, the, um, the 900 is a good one to start with. Only now do I realize that I missed a wall here, so I'm going to add that one in. The way I'll do that in this case is drag a copy. So I'll drag it across first just so it's next to it, and then I'll drag it across 1100. Now if I remembered off the top of my head what thickness the wall was, um, I could have done that in one go just by saying drag across um, 1210, and that would have got me in the same place at the same time, but that's fine. One thing I didn't explain before, when we're placing a door, let's say we're using the center point to place it, we click once to position it in the wall, and then the second time we click, we're positioning the orientation of the swing and the hinge side. So here I have four different options. We also see a sun. So if this was an exterior door, then we'd be making sure that no matter which way we want it to actually open, we have to make sure that the sun is on the outside because in terms of the way that the model represents, we want the sill and the head 
and the jam to understand which way is inside and which is outside because they will have a different detail. Not all doors are going to be single hinge doors. So we see that the one at the front is a double hinge door. So in order to find that, we're going to go into the door setting, back to the hinge doors, and then we'll scroll down until we find the one that's appropriate. Now there's a lot of standardized doors here. I try to use the most compatible or simple one there is. Um, unfortunately, with the way this works, we might place a double door and then decide that we want to have a transom. Let's see where that one is. Yep, and then we might decide we want to have side lights with a transom, and then we might decide we don't want to have a transom, just side lights. And so unfortunately, these are all different objects, so we'd need to redo these objects every time or switch between these objects, which is very unfortunate, particularly if we've spent a lot of time making the settings correct. So it would be a lot better if um, in other versions of ARCHICAD we can actually just have one object which we can edit, and I believe that does exist, uh, but it's not available in this version at the moment. So we're going to use the double door in this case. We're going to see that this is 1500. This door looks a lot smaller. I'm not going to worry about the fact that it looks larger at the moment. And here I need to redo this because when I placed the door, I clicked on the inside face. But when I'm doing an exterior door, I need to pay more attention and click on the exterior face. So that sun is facing out. Even though the door swings in, I need that sun to be facing out to begin with. So I've placed the majority of the doors, we can come back and do a few more later, but windows are a bit harder, particularly when we're doing trace reference, just because we can't see them. So there's a, few, a couple different ways that I can do this. One would be to, before I start drawing, maybe get a line tool, and we could make it a colour if we wanted to, and just represent where these windows are. I'm not being incredibly careful about how I do this and I'll explain that in a minute these are sliding doors so I'm going to do sliding doors as a door not a window so I'm just going to highlight some of the windows at the moment and then I'll select all these lines again the same way pick up the line tool control A edit cut paste them up onto ground paste and if I wanted to to make this easier later I could select these grouping group and group them all together so they'd be faster to delete. Now when I go into my window tool similarly we have lots of different types of windows I'm going to go to my linked library ARCHICAD library 21 windows basic windows again we've got lots of different types here and depending on what we want to do, uh, we need to understand how many sashes they've got. So again, it's a bit of a design problem because we might not know when we first start how many sashes we want to have. So I generally will start with my window 21, which means it's got one sash, but then I might need to change to a double sash or a multi sash uh, because I can't again change within that one window. Unfortunately, I need to, um, I need to switch. So let's place that. I could either, I could do one of two things. I could get the size right first, or I could place it, and then I could stretch it. In this case, because I'm being a bit rough, I'm going to stretch it. And we see that I end up with a strange number. The, the number I end up with is 1964, which isn't a very good number for a window or a window opening, and it's not a brick number either. So for now, I'm just going to round that off. I'm just going to change this to be 2000. Again, that's a strange number in terms of bricks, but it's a round number, and I don't care. Now, the only additional information that I didn't add, let's do that again, stretch, 2800, is that when we go into the window settings, the window might be full height. Let's change this to this option here. The window might be full height, or the window might be only partial height. In this case, I'm saying that it's at a sill base of zero, so it's at the ground level, but it's only 1500 high, so that's not really good. In this case, I'm going to make this one 2100 high and zero at the bottom. Whereas for this window, I'm going to make this one 
900 from the bottom and then sorry 1200 in total height which means that they're both ending up with the same head height at 2100 but they're different sizes so again we can do that before we place them or we can do it after it really does not matter depends on what you're trying to do finally once we've got our windows there's a lot of other settings that we might want to change one of the main ones that we'll probably want to change under the basic window settings uh, we have all these subcategories one of the main ones that we might want to change straight away is the the material representation or the model attributes now we see that that's actually represented a few different times so that's under each subheading under fixtures and fitting under wall opening under window settings so if I want to change the materials for my window it's actually this option here material settings and thankfully they've got this option here uniform window settings or surface so if I know that I want all of the frames to be the same material I can click this button and change it all in one go so I have a, a material surface here called RMD door and window frame and I can then switch this between whatever white black or timber frame I want it to be so per project I could make this change a lot faster generally I'll make these frame and sashes pen number one and I can change the glass as well in this case I'll have one that's called when I can find it RMD glass and ideally I will do that maybe at the start once I before I start doing all the windows so all of the windows have the same settings or what I sometimes will do is I'll place all of the windows roughly like I did just then then I'll select all the windows and change the settings all together what I don't want to do is have to go and change those settings 20 times so as much as I can streamline my work and, and make all those changes in one go that's gonna make me a little bit happier all right, so that's a very basic introduction to the windows. Let's have a look at this model before we go any further. So we'll just select it all, right click, show selection in my key or 3D. And we can see this is what we've got. So we're not gonna worry too much about the opening lines. We can get rid of those later. I didn't put a slab in. I haven't done the first floor. I haven't done the, the roof. So there's still a lot to go, uh, but We've had a, a basic look at how these work, and then all the internal doors are shown as glass infill. That's not necessarily the case, but that's something very easy that we can fix up later as well.